All my system 23 into that 5 is here and this release is a huge step to the year of the voice, bringing back some unexpected device, but also will let you build your own voice assistant with ESP Home. Hey everyone, this is Alex Reed. As you probably know, this is the year of the voice for Home Assistant. And last week they streamed an event about their chapter 2. They showcase a lot of great stuff that are coming in that 2023.5 version. So today let's have a look on everything about Voice Assistant, but also some other addition on Matter and other great stuff. Let's start with the new menu in your settings, which is Voice Assistant. If you click on this, you will have three different sections, which is Assist, Alexa, and Google Assistant. The first one is for the assistant that will be created by your instance of Home Assistant. From there, you will be able to create your own assistant. So give it a name, select the language you want, and then you will have to pick your conversation agent. This is the part that will handle the intents, and you can have as many as you want. More on that later. So pick your agent and select your engines. If you are a Home Assistant Cloud subscriber, you will be able to use our cloud-based encoders and decoders for speech, and they are crazy fast. I mean, you barely finish your sentence and it already know what you want. This is amazing. Then there is a new menu that you can select the entities that you want to expose to the different voice assistants. So you can decide which one you expose to Assist, Alexa and Google Assistant. At the current version, it seems that it's only working if you are using Home Assistant Cloud. But they are supposed to extend that behavior if you are using uh, your own Alexa skill or Google Assistant without Home Assistant Cloud. Now, if you really want to have everything local, this is still possible. You will have to install two new add-ons that will be the engine for your assistant. The first one is Whisper. This one handles the speech to text. And well, you only have to install it and select the model and the language. For the model, if you are using a Raspberry Pi 4, select the Tiny Int 8 model. But if you have a more powerful uh, setup, you can use another one. The second one is Piper. This one handles the text to speech. For so you only have to install it, and from the configuration, you can select the voice. You can pick the voice that you want. Now that you installed those add-ons, they should be discovered by Home Assistant. So just enable the integrations. Then you can go back in your assistant, create a new one using the local agents. Now that you created your assistant, you can use it directly in your dashboard if you are under HTTPS and you can pick the one, the conversation agent that you want. Turn on wall lights. Turned on light. Turn off wall lights. Turned off light. But using that from the UI was already kind of possible. So let's try the other way to do it. This is a smart device that I didn't see coming this year. In fact, I thought it was dead and this is the phone. So there is a new integration for voice over IP which support device like this one, the HT802 from Grandstream. With this, you can basically connect your old phone to this box and this box will talk with Home Assistant and let you speak directly with your assistant. Turn off the wall lights. Turned off light. Turn on the wall lights. Turned on light. And this integration is pretty simple to use. So you just have to enable the integration in Home Assistant, then go to the settings of your voice over IP box and set the number. So as soon as you take your phone, it will call Home Assistant and connect you to the assistant that you configured. This might be interesting if you're not looking for something that is not always listening, and if you have phones that you're not using. What is also interesting is the OpenAI integration. This integration was already present in the previous version, but in this version, we have the ability to create multiple uh, instances of that integration. And you can select which one you want to pick up the phone. Another way to speak with Home Assistant is ESP Home. So last month they had a feature to support voice assistant. So if you have a tiny device like this one, which is the Atom Echo, this is an ESP32 with a small speaker and a tiny microphone. So you can use it to speak directly with uh, Home Assistant. Turn on the wall lights. Turn on light. Turn off the wall lights. The only thing is that the wake word is not supported yet, so it's a push to talk, or at least a trigger to talk. It could be a motion sensor, it could be a service that you call for Home Assistant, a door that open. Well, you get the idea. 
I also tried different hardware with uh, ESP on, but unfortunately the one that I had so far was not fully supported. Either the encoder or decoder from, for the speaker or the microphone were not fully supported yet, so I will maybe come back with that later. So for the ear device this is a pretty big step, and I'm looking forward for the chapter 3. But now let's have a look at another evolving feature of this year, which is Matter. In this version, covers were added to support it. So if you own like a SwitchBot Hub 2, you will be able to control your SwitchBot blind or curtains with that without even having a Bluetooth proxy or a Bluetooth dongle. It will use straight Matter from the Hub to Home Assistant to control it. Another great addition to this release is a new feature about the webhook. So if you are using webhooks for your automation, you will now be able to select the get method, but also to limit the access of that webhook to local network only, which is always great to improve the security of your instance. Another interesting integration added to this release is the Android TV remote. This will create a remote so you will be able to turn off, turn on your Android boxes, but also send some spe specific stuff about the application to launch and your outreach or everything else. On my side, the Android box was found automatically by Home Assistant, so I only had to follow the step to configure it, and now I am able to control it without any issue. And now I am able to control it from Home Assistant and use it through the automations. This release was a pretty big one with a lot of different surprises. I'm really looking forward to know what Chapter 3 will bring to us. So I hope you liked that quick overview of that new release. And if you did, please give a thumbs up. I will be really thankful. And if you do want, you can also subscribe so you will be able to see the next projects. See you. Um, they brought back phone. They, brought, they, they did this. I, I'm not sure why, but it's still crazy.